I'm Flint Ballantyne with Ballantyne Gear. These are tests of the Ballantyne Gear Evoke fog protection systems. Many of the procedures shown are performed beyond their intended use. Do not attempt to recreate them. You may be seriously injured. The safety professionals in the video are highly trained and are using custom protective equipment designed for these tests. Some say that fall protection for a person on a first story roof working near the edge is not possible because there isn't enough room to stop a fall. However, with the Ballantine Gear Evoke fall protection system and the right training, this can be easily attained. We will show you how a 35 foot span that happens to be on a 115 foot anchor line protects a person from a fall. We installed an anchor line to an evoke at the front of a house, ran it across the house, and then to a neighbor's tree to create a 115 foot anchor line. In order to be able to show the dynamics of fall arrest with an evoke system, we will create a fall prior to reinforcing the anchor line with the intermediate anchor. Don't do this. The maximum allowed span for an evoke fall protection system is 75 feet, and we will be working with a 115 foot span. Stephen Ballantyne, an engineer and fall safety professional at Ballantyne Gear, is standing with his toes at the roof edge. That is too close. His lifeline is at a light tension, 10 to 15 pounds. This is good. In order to clear the roof edge, Stephen backs up 5 feet and then, with slack in his rope, moves quickly down the roof. Don't do that. He slips and falls off the roof. He falls 8.5 feet and is suspended a foot above the ground. In spite of the violations, Stephen is fortunate and the system keeps him from hitting the ground. An intermediate anchorage is now attached to the anchor line near the chimney using a support line creating a 35 foot span within the 115 foot anchor line. This is a sanctioned installation when used properly. For this demonstration, this system will not be used properly. I will be the one misusing it. A load cell is placed between the evoke and the anchor line to measure foot pounds on the anchor line. Another load cell is placed between the lifeline and the anchor line to measure foot pounds on the lifeline. For the first test, the lifeline is at a light tension with toes 8 inches from the roof edge. I step up the roof about 8 feet and then run down the roof and unsuccessfully attempt to jump off the roof. One hundred sixteen foot pounds are shown on the lifeline and two hundred twenty one foot pounds are shown on the anchor line. On the second test, the lifeline is at a light tension with toes six inches from the roof edge. I step up the roof about eight feet and then run down the roof with greater force and manage to get my butt off the roof by twisting sideways at the roof edge. Getting off the roof is difficult. Foot-pounds are shown on the lifeline and 258 foot-pounds are shown on the anchor line. On the third test, the lifeline is at a light tension with toes 6 inches from the roof edge. I step up the roof about 8 feet and then run down the roof with even greater force, but the results are not greatly different from the last time. One hundred fifty foot pounds are shown on the lifeline and two hundred seventy two foot pounds are shown on the anchor line. On the fourth test, the lifeline is at a light tension with toes at the roof edge. This time I simply throw my legs and feet off the edge. Eighty two foot pounds are shown on the lifeline and one hundred eighty four pounds are shown on the anchor line. I struggle to lower myself further off the roof and with great effort create one hundred sixty one pounds on the lifeline and two hundred sixty six pounds on the anchor line. Help him out. He's trying to fall. Oh, never mind. He's he's trying to fall. <laughs> That's it. Give me a ladder. On the fifth test, the lifeline is at a light tension with toes again six inches from the roof edge. 
I step up the roof about eight feet and then run down the roof with a lighter force than previously, but this time I plant my feet on the roof edge instead of throwing them off. I do not fall off the roof. One hundred fourteen foot pounds are shown on the lifeline and two hundred seventeen foot pounds are shown on the anchor line. On the sixth test, the lifeline is at a light tension with toes six inches from the roof edge. I step up the roof about eight feet and then run down the roof with a great force. I again plant my feet on the roof edge. I am now leaning over the roof edge looking at the ground, but then the system rebounds and pulls me back on the roof. 138 foot-pounds are shown on the lifeline and 245 pounds are shown on the anchor line. In all of the previous examples, if I would have planted my feet at the roof edge instead of stepping off, I would have remained on my feet at the roof edge. With the Ballantine Gear Evoke non-penetrating fall protection systems for residential style sloped roofs, even for a person working on the roof edge of a first story sloped roof, fall protection is achievable. In this video, a part of the Evoke fall protection system that helps protect the person on the roof from falls results from a concept we call free fall adjustment, as discussed near the end of the Ballantine Gear Evoke Systems Technical Manual. To understand free fall adjustment, let's first look at another concept we call apparent free fall distance. In the not distant past, an assumption was frequently made that if a user fell from a roof while attached to a lifeline anchored to the roof, that is at a light tension at his or her dorsal D-ring with a lifeline perpendicular to the fall hazard, similar to the first example, the user would free fall a distance similar to their height. The distance from the attachment of the lifeline at the dorsal D-ring to the bottoms of his or her feet, plus another foot for harness stretch. For many people, that is about six feet. Frequently, this is not accurate. We will explain why. In the first example, on a flat roof, you will see an example of a fall clearance requirement using the apparent freefall distance, showing a six foot apparent freefall, a three foot fall arrest, and a safety margin of at least two feet as required by OSHA, requiring a total fall clearance of 11 feet. If falling from a roof edge of 10 feet on a single story roof, the 11 foot fall clearance requirement is greater than the actual 10 foot clearance. This is an unacceptable scenario. In the second example, as in the first example, it might appear that the free fall is six feet. However, the length of the lifeline from the anchor to the user's dorsal D-ring is 16 feet, and the distance from the anchor to the roof edge is 15 foot 9 inches. Since the lifeline is three inches longer than the distance to the roof edge, you would need to add three inches to the six foot apparent free fall so that the fall clearance requirement is 11 foot 3 inches instead of 11 feet. Now let's look at how freefall adjustment affects a user on a sloped roof. In the third example, the user is standing at the edge of a steep 12-12 sloped roof with a lifeline of 16 feet from the anchor to the user's harness. However, the distance from the anchor to the roof edge is 17 feet and 5 inches. The user cannot fall from the roof edge unless there is a system stretch of at least 1 foot and 5 inches. In example 4, the user is on a not very steep 412 sloped roof with a lifeline of 15 feet from the anchor to the user's harness. However, the distance from the anchor to the roof edge is 15 foot 9 inches. The user cannot fall from the roof edge unless there is a system stretch of at least 9 inches. It may be concluded from this discussion regarding free fall adjustment that if a user is standing on a roof with a 412 to 1612 slope attached to a lifeline at his or her dorsal D-ring. The user is standing at the edge of the roof facing away from the roof with a lifeline at a light tension. The lifeline is flat or descending to the user. And the lifeline is attached to the dorsal D-ring directly above the roof edge. Then the user would not be able to fall from the roof since his or her attachment to the lifeline would be shorter than the distance to the fall hazard, unless system stretch allows the user to go beyond the fall hazard, in which case the actual free fall would be less, normally significantly less, than an apparent free fall of six feet.